As the Cold War slowly began, the US longed to show the USSR that no matter where the Soviets hid, US bombers would be there to retaliate if need be. This ambition proved a perfect opportunity for the recently created United States Air Force, which was eager to further establish itself as an independent branch of the US Navy and the Army. Curtis LeMay, head of the Strategic Air Command, ordered a group of B-50 bombers to embark on a mission to fly non-stop around the globe. One of those aircraft was a B-50A Superfortress, nicknamed Lucky Lady 2. The aircraft made history as the first to circle the world non-stop with the help of innovative mid-air refueling techniques. The goal to increase the USAF's prestige and the country's power had been achieved. More importantly, Lucky Lady 2 showed the USSR and the whole world that, according to Bruce D. Callender, quote, distance and geographical barriers no longer offered sanctuary from air power. Neutralizing the Sea Barrier The obsession with one day touching the skies has accompanied humanity since the beginning of time. The dream of flying took center place in ancient mythology and science fiction until it became a reality at the beginning of the 20th century. Since then, aviation has quickly evolved. In 1909, French aviator Louis Blériot flew a humble monoplane from France to England, staying aloft for over 40 minutes. His flight astonished the world, although not for the expected reasons. Before him, the Wrights had flown non-stop for longer. Still, Blériot's flight achieved something historical. He had flown across the English Channel, reaching another country not by sea, but by air. This was both revolutionary and terrifying. Until then, only the Vikings, William the Conqueror, and the Spanish had been able to get to England by sea. Some British military officers immediately raised their concerns. Aviation, it seemed, had quickly neutralized the sea barrier, UK's natural defenses. A London newspaper of the time warned, quote, Britain's impregnability has passed away. Air power will become as vital as sea power. That was precisely what, 40 years later, Captain James G. Gallagher and his 13-man crew proved after their B-50 Lucky Lady 2 flew non-stop around the globe. The Iron Curtain Titans The Great War showed military powers all over the world that aviation was the future of warfare. Airplanes could carry on a variety of roles. They were versatile enough for combat, support, and recon operations. By World War II, aircraft were already the backbone of all the countries involved. Those who lacked air power suffered dramatically during the first years of the conflict, such as the USSR and the Eastern Front during the furious German advance of Operation Barbarossa. During the five long years of the conflict, aviation experimented with an explosive short-time evolution. Jet fighters, escort fighters, long-distance bombers, and all sorts of aircraft were produced. However, strategic bombers left a mark, demonstrating their sheer effectiveness for the post-war epoch's coming years. During the war, the U.S. Air Force used vast numbers of Boeing B-17s and B-29 flying fortresses to bomb German cities and eventually drop the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As the USSR tightened and solidified its grip on Germany and Eastern Europe, increasing its military numbers and strength, the U.S. decided that it was about time to teach the Iron Curtain which country was the real superpower. To demonstrate to the world that the U.S. was the country with the most potent air and nuclear capabilities, the government reached out to Air Force General and aviation legend Curtis E. LeMay for leadership. Around the world. Following World War II, Curtis LeMay took over the Strategic Air Command. He viewed it as an essential tool to showcase the USAF's power, and more importantly, to dissuade the USSR from further acts of aggressive expansionism in Europe. By the time he assumed command, the Air Force was already conducting non-stop flights in an effort to try and circle the globe in one day. LeMay concluded that if a B-50 bomber could reach any given point in the world in one sitting, it would send an unmistakable message to the Soviet Union. No matter where Russia lay, U.S. bombers could drop nuclear bombs anytime, anywhere. The Air Force immediately began planning a flight around the world in which no stops would be made. Mid-air refueling would be at the operation's core. A plan was made for an aircraft to share fuel mid-flight through a drogue system. In the arrangement, a refueling tanker would trail a hose for the B-50 bomber to catch. It was not easy to do, but it was the most innovative way of refueling without landing. The Air Force established that the flight would last approximately four days, equal to roughly 96 hours of continuous flying. The B-50 would be flown at altitudes between 10,000 and 20,000 feet. 
Four mid-air hookups for refueling would be required. KB-29 aircraft tankers would be awaiting the B-50 at U.S. bases scattered across the most remote regions of the world's oceans. Lucky Lady 2 The initial aircraft selected for the flight was the Global Queen. Lucky Lady 2 was assigned as its backup aircraft. Both aircraft were Boeing B-50A of the 63rd Bomb Squadron, 43rd Bombardment Group, fully equipped with 12 50 caliber machine guns. The only difference between them and a standard B-50 was the additional fuel tank they carried on the bomb bay to maximize range. The Boeing B-50 itself was an updated version of the iconic B-29 Superfortress from World War II. The B-50 used a powerful Pratt & Whitney R-4360 that gave it more loading capacity and range. Although the fuselage was very similar to the Superfortress, the B-50 distinguished itself for its redesigned engine nacelles, mounts, taller vertical tail, and more robust landing gear. Internally, it had an updated control system and remote turret fire control equipment, alongside other tweaks that improved its already top-notch performance. B-50s first began to be delivered in 1948. However, by 1955, they were replaced by the jet-powered Boeing B-47 Stratajet. After a short bombing combat career, the B-50s were modified to fulfill aerial tanker and weather reconnaissance roles until the early 1960s. The journey begins. Although the whole purpose of the flight was to enhance the USAF's prestige and make the USSR tremble in fear for its enemy's combat capabilities, the Air Force decided to keep it secret until they were confident in their success. No one in the USAF wanted to create a hype that had even the slightest chance of turning into a colossal failure. Consequently, almost no one in the US knew about what was about to happen, not even the staff that assembled the B-50s and the B-29 tankers. On February 25, 1949, the Global Queen departed Carswell Airfield in Texas. When it began to cross the Atlantic, engine problems led to an emergency landing in the Azores. The Queen's mission was over. Lucky Lady 2, living up to its name, rose to the occasion. The morning of February 26, 1949, it took off from the U.S. to fulfill the mission. Aboard Lucky Lady 2, a crew of 14 was ready to circle the world. Under the command of Captain James G. Gallagher, the team was comprised of veterans from the 63rd Bombardment Squadron. In line with the mission's secretive nature, the crew was instructed to swap tail numbers with the tankers at every mid-air refueling to make onlookers believe they were on a short trip. The first rendezvous occurred above the Azores on the morning of February 27th. It took two hours for the Lucky Lady 2 and the tanker to complete the refueling process. After that, the B-50 flew over Gibraltar and the Sahara Desert. On February 28th, Lucky Lady arrived at the second refueling post in Saudi Arabia. The crew experienced turbulence during the hookup process because they were moving through a sandstorm. By the time the crew reached the Philippines the next day, the men were already tired and worn out. However, they had to keep up because heavy weather made the third mid-air refueling more difficult, to the point that after the hookup, the tanker that assisted the crew fatally crashed on its way back to base. The deteriorating weather conditions accompanied Lucky Lady 2 all the way to Hawaii, the last refueling post. However, besides minor mechanical problems, the B-50 was refueled. On March 2nd, the crew flew over El Paso, Texas, and landed at Carswell at 9.22 a.m. Thus, Lucky Lady broke the world record of circling the Earth non-stop in 94 hours. The entire crew was greeted by Curtis LeMay himself and USAF Secretary Stuart Symington, among other high-ranking officers. Reporters and photographers were informed of the event one day before and were present when the plane landed. No city will be safe. Aboard the Lucky Lady 2, every crew member was conferred a distinguished flying cross for their successful mission. The men joined other Spanish and Portuguese adventurers that, like Magellan and Alcano, had circumnavigated the world by sea four centuries before. Lucky Lady's flight demonstrated many things. One of them was that aerial refueling was practical, but needed more improvements to make it easier for aircraft to link up. More importantly, the operation achieved the military purpose of alarming the USSR of U.S. aerial power. The USAF effectively showed that bombers could be dispatched from the U.S. mainland to strike anywhere on the globe. As the Associated Press reported, quote, Potential enemies may reason that no single one of their cities, should war come, would be safe. In 1957, 
A Boeing B-52 commanded by Lucky Lady 2's co-pilot, James H. Morris, would follow the same route in half the time, completing its flight in just 45 hours. The surviving B-50 bombers were converted into tankers or used as weather reconnaissance aircraft in the late 1950s. The last combat mission of a B-50 was during the early 60s, when Cold War tensions rose during the Cuban Missile Crisis under President Kennedy's administration. Modified WB-50s monitoring weather around Cuba and the Caribbean were used for photo reconnaissance flights. After its adventure, Lucky Lady 2 was damaged in an accident. Its fuselage went to the Plains of Fame Air Museum in Chino, California, where it remains on display. <laughs>